This is a very basic tutorial about JSON structures, how you should read JSON structures and how you can create them. If you know how to create a JSON structure or JSON object, then you will be able to correctly read and uh, analyze a JSON object when you see it. Okay, so the tutorial is a basic introduction, just a foundation on JSON structures. And to start, I will add a button trigger. Okay, so I created a new flow. I'll add this trigger, manually trigger flow. And to test JSON objects, I suggest uh, starting with initialize variable. So this action will let you play with JSON objects. Well, uh, this is a good action to start with when playing with JSON objects. The variable name will be var JSON. And the type is going to be an object. So we have a few types in here, so I think it's important to understand these types. Boolean, integer, float, and uh, string, these are primitive types. Okay, so these are, this is a number, this is also a number, this is a Boolean, uh, and this is a text, right? But these two here are complex structures, complex data types, the object and the array. The JSON um, variable is going to be an object or a JSON object. And this is, as I said, a complex structure. And the object, let me zoom in, the object starts with a curly brace and ends with a curly brace, okay? So whatever is in between are properties of this object. A property starts with a double quote and let's say I'm going to add a property in this object first name. And then I will add a value. So I'll assign a value to the first name property of this object. And the value is Alex. Now before I add the value, I have to put a colon in here. And I will go ahead and uh, give it a value, Alex, right? So as you can see, the the value is between double quotes. This, mean, this means that the first name property is a text because the value Alex is between double quotes. So whenever you see a value between double quotes, then you should know that that's a text, okay? So this will be evaluated like a text. Now, if I want to add another property, I have to add a comma and then on a new line, I will add, let's say, the age, okay? And this would be the second property, age, then value 34, that's my age. Okay, so 34, because it's not uh, between uh, double quotes, it will be evaluated as a number, okay? So this is a valid number. If I want to add something else, I'll add a comma in here, and then on a new line, I will uh, add, let's say, what else? Active, okay? Am I active? Yes, true, okay? And you, you see that I'm not putting true between double quotes. If I leave uh, the value like this, it will be evaluated as a boolean, okay? So this can be either true or false, okay? So this is also a primitive data type. So this is a boolean, this is an integer, and this is a text. All three are primitive data types. So let's put it back as it was, true, okay? Now, 
in a JSON object, you may also have a null value, okay? So let me show you how that looks. So I'm going to also add another property, which is location. I'm not going to say what is my location. So I'm just going to leave this null, okay? So it knows what to do with this, okay? So whenever you see location null, then it means it's not a Boolean, it's not a, a number, it's not a text, it's just null, okay? But a JSON object also knows how to evaluate other objects inside it. So you can nest another object. And by nesting another object, you're basically adding a complex property, okay? So as I said, an object is a complex object, right? It's a complex data type, and you can put it inside an object. So you can do some nesting. Let me show you how that works. So continuing uh, in inside this object, I'll add another property, which is called job, right? So the job will look like an object. Okay, so I'm starting a new object here, and I'm just going to end it uh, here, okay? So I will, I will add a few spaces in here just to, okay, let me do this. Just going to copy this. So the job can have, so the job object, this would be the job object, right? We're inside this large object here, but the job object starts here and ends here. And inside we can add other properties of this job object. And the first property can be um, role, okay? And my role is technical support engineer, okay? So now I'm defining my job and I can add employer, okay? Microsoft. And I can add inside this object another structure. And this time I can add an array, which is also a complex data type, just like the object, but it looks a bit differently. So I'll, I'll show you in a minute. So let's say I want to add um, mm, mm, mm. um, years active in my role. Okay. So I can put 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Okay. So you see in here that when I defined the array, I used a square bracket, okay? So inside the array, I've put an enumeration of years. So these would be numbers, okay? So these will be evaluated as numbers in the array, just like in here. Um, this is a number, this is also a number, but this time the number is inside an array data structure, which is called years active. Okay. So that's how we can define an object. That's, that's, this is the basic stuff, the foundation um, of JSON, how you can define it. And I'll show you how you can tap into this uh, object in a minute. So let's see how we can tap into this object, how we can take the job object. Okay. So let's save. All right. So I'm going to test the flow just to make sure that it's running.
Okay, so if we look in the initialized variable, by the way, whenever you test something in a flow, always expand the action and look at the inputs. In this case, for the initialized variable, I don't have any output. I only have inputs. So in the inputs, I have the name of the variable, the type and the value. So as you can see, numbers are showing up in green, right? The objects, right? So you see that the object uh, curly brace is black. The column is also black. And the property name is in um, red or brown. Not sure what this color is. And the rest is blue. Okay, so this is an indication when you look at the value, right? That's coming from, from an output or from an input. If it looks like this, then you're dealing with a JSON object. If it's colored like this, then you're dealing with a JSON object. Let me show you something else. If I go in edit and I switch to text uh, string, right? And t uh, test it once more. And run it. The object that I created is no longer evaluated as a JSON object. It's just a string. So this would be a plain text, right? There's nothing special about this. This is not a an object that you can tap into, right? It's it's a plain text. All right. So I just wanted to clarify that uh, so you know how to read an object, how to create an object. Okay. Now, if we switch back to the object data type and we click here for a new step. I want to show you how to tap into that object. So in order to get what you want, you can reference the properties directly or you can use the parse JSON. Now, when you're starting off, you may want to use parse JSON, right? Because it's easy to get what you want from a from an R object by using parse JSON. So let's do that. And then in another tutorial, I will show you how to actually tap into objects and get what you want without the parse JSON. So let's search for parse JSON. The content is coming from the variable var JSON, right? And parse JSON likes to have a schema. Now schema is basically the definition of this object. We don't have the definition of this object, so we cannot give the schema directly unless we create it. Now, luckily, if we copy the object and we generate uh, using the generate from sample uh, button here, we have this option. So if we click on generate from sample, this opens up and we can actually paste it in here. And we click done. So this is the sample that I'm um, giving to the parse JSON action to generate the schema and we click done. And we have the schema. So this would be the definition of our data. Now you see that it starts starts with an object and it has properties, right? The first name, which is a string, then the age, which is the integer. Then if it's active, the, the active property, which is a uh, Boolean, then it continues with the location, which is nothing, right? So it's a null. Uh, then it continues with the job, which is an object, right? So it's an object inside an object, as you can see here. Here I have the object, the main object. Then here I have the job, which is the nested object, which also has properties, right? The role, which is a string, employer, also a string, years active, an array, and inside the array I have items, which are integers. And that's how you can read it. Now, let me test it once and you'll see what happens, okay?
there you go. I have my inputs, which is the content. So I'm inputting the object. I have the schema that tells the parse JSON action how to read the content. And I have my output, which is actually the same thing as the input. All right. So why is the parse JSON action useful? It's because the parse JSON action will give you the dynamic values that are coming from the object itself. So let me show you how you can get that uh, those dynamic values. I usually uh, leverage the compose action from the data operation connector. So if I pick this and I click on inputs and then I try to pick something in here. In the parse JSON, I have, as you can see, the job, the first name, the role, the employer, the age, the item, because now it's parsed by the parse JSON action. So it's super easy to get what I want from, from that object, right? Now, if you think about it, let's say you're dealing with an item from SharePoint. You can easily pick whatever you want from that object, from that item from SharePoint by either parsing with JSON or by tapping directly into that object. And, and as I said, I will show you that in, a, in another tutorial. So let's say I want to pick the years active. Okay. So this should give me the array of years uh, active in Microsoft. Okay. So let me test. Save and test. Run flow. And there you go. I have my array. All right. So I hope you found this uh, useful and um, I'm hoping to make more of these. I hope you find them useful. And if you have any ideas, uh, please leave a comment. Thank you.